Next speaker is Javier Muñoz Gonzalez, predicting to prevent identification of the genetic variants associated to the oncogenic activity of the 816B kit mutation in myeloid neoplasias, use of systemic mastocytosis as a model for the study of the malignant transformation. Good afternoon. Did you know that the human eye can distinguish between more shades of green than of any other color? Or that most of the red-headed people come from northern countries? Well, millions of years ago, we didn't live in cities like Salamanca. We lived in places with dense vegetation, and we needed to be able to identify wild animals to protect ourselves. Hence the ability to distinguish between more types of green. Also, in northern countries with less sun exposure, red hair allows for a better absorption of sunlight and a better production of vitamin D. These are examples of human evolution based on natural selection. But how does natural selection start? What's the first thing that happens before the survival of the strongest? A mutation. Mutations are changes in our DNA. Imagine for a, for a moment that these words are your DNA. Well, all the changes represented in red are mutations. Through mutations, all living creatures are constantly evolving. However, there's also a dark side of mutations. Sometimes a mutation can make a cell to start grow and proliferate without control. That's called cancer. My research is focused on blood cancer using a rare disease called systemic mastocytosis as a model. This benign disease is characterized by the presence of allergy and inflammation-related symptoms. And although there is no cure, these patients have a normal life expectancy, but around 10% of these patients can develop a life-threatening cancer. So what is happening here? What is causing this benign disease to transform into a life-threatening cancer? To find the answer to that question, we compare DNAs of different patients from both subtypes of the disease. And we found significant differences in the mutations of both groups. This means that by looking at a patient's DNA, we are capable of predicting the likelihood of this benign disease to transform into a cancer. Unfortunately, this method is still too expensive to be applied on a daily basis. So our next goal will be focused on developing a specific test that is able to predict this malignant transformation and that's affordable for everyday use. A better understanding of this process will not only help to predict patient's outcome, it will also identify new potential targets for drug development which could prevent malignant transformation in systemic mastocytosis patients and the rest of the cancers. Thank you for listening.